Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching India's World with your host Rajat Kane. In this edition of the show, we'll go into the details on takeaways from Vice President Venkaiah Naidu's visit to two Latin American nations, Paraguay and Costa Rica. During his eight-day visit, Vice President of India stressed on strengthening the bilateral ties between India and Latin American nations as well as the Central American nations. This visit also assumes greater significance for being the first ever visit by an Indian Vice President to Paraguay. Now, during his visit, Mr. Naidu sought the support of two countries for India's bid for permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council, apart from pushing for strengthening the cooperation in various areas, including trade, culture and science and technology with Paraguay and Costa Rica. In his high-level talks with the leadership of both the nations, the Vice President stressed on the menace of terrorism and how it's posing a grave threat to global peace and stability. Outlining a common desire to take an uncompromising stand against terror, the leadership of two countries agreed to cooperate to deal with the menace of terror. And the Vice President was also conferred an honorary doctorate by the University of Peace founded by United Nations Organization for its contribution to the rule of law, democracy and sustainable development in India. In his acceptance speech, the Vice President underlined that India has been an ardent and consistent champion of peace since time immemorial and he was privileged to have received this honour when the world is commemorating the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, the extraordinary apostle of peace. To discuss further the importance of Latin America and Central America in diplomatic and strategic sphere for India, we joined with our guest, former Ambassador Jayan Das Gupta, former Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, and strategic analyst K.P. Nair. Thanks all of you for joining the show, sir. In this eight-day visit by the Vice President, he emphasized a lot on the menace of terrorism. To begin discussion, let's start with the issue of terror. How important Latin American countries and the Central American countries play a role for India in combating terror? I would like to start with you, Mr. Rajat, we are, our global footprint is steadily growing. India's stock in the world has never been as high. There is, I am heartened to see that there is tremendous interest in what India does, in India's soft power, in India's uh, potential. Uh, what India has to offer and uh, Vice President's visit has been a significant visit in that he has made, made it a mission to reach out to, to Latin American countries. You would recall that earlier in November he had visited Guatemala, Panama and Peru. This time he has been to these two important countries and yes, terrorism is a global menace. There is no country in the world which has remained unaffected by terror. Uh, the degrees may, may vary, the kind of terror that uh, they face may vary. Right. Latin American countries are, have been more uh, afflicted by narco-terrorism, uh, but they understand uh, the, the pains and the rigor and the devastation that terror causes. And the world is at one today. The important thing that has happened in the last few years is that there is a global fatigue, rather revulsion against terror. And uh, you, you would have seen, we, were, we have all noticed how after the Fulbama attack, the world as one reacted uh, with abhorrence against mm. uh, terrorism which emanates from our neighborhood. Right. I mean, uh, you actually left at the point where I would start with like, I mean, Vice President also emphasized on the cross-border terrorism. So, how can Latin American countries help us? in charting that narrative that India is deeply affected by the cross-border terrorism, how this narrative can be strengthened? I think the first <clears throat> point is that uh, India needs to sensitize uh, other countries and uh, countries which are in uh, South America which uh, are quite uh, distant from us, they may not know the full details, right. barring the major countries like Brazil, Argentina, etc. or Mexico. Uh, so, that is one very important message which uh, would, be, would definitely have been put across by our Honorable Vice President. The second thing is there are various international fora in which uh, action, uh, collective action against uh, terror financing, against countries which are 
harboring or uh, actively abetting terrorism uh, that is uh, uh, dealt with for instance the financial action task force fatf mm -hmm. there are other agencies also and uh, the <coughs> votes of different countries count their opinion counts and uh, we should not uh, forget that uh, paraguay is a very important member of mercosur and so is uh, uh, costa rica in terms of the cafta dr fta with the us so they have a considerable uh, degree of heft but that apart it is important for us to have as many friends and allies as possible in our global fight against terrorism <coughs> mr nair india's growing footprint in latin america how far do you see we have this area to explore considering uh, that our footprint in that particular area maybe because of distance or logistics was not to the potential so now are we exploring potential to the greater heights you see um, it appears to me that uh, Uh, Vice President Venkaiya Naidu has taken a special interest in the uh, region, okay. judging by his previous visits and uh, also his interaction when he is in Delhi at uh, Latin American Fora, uh, meetings with uh, visiting leaders, accounts of such meetings with the Vice President. But on this particular visit. i want to emphasize that uh, you know uh, the vice president is very good at spotting unusual opportunities right. and capitalizing yeah. on it and um, i noticed uh, during this visit that on international uh, women's day mm -hmm. uh, his meetings it so happened but he made the most of it his meetings were primarily with Uh, women leaders in uh, Costa Rica you know uh, the trade minister of Costa Rica is a lady the minister in waiting during his visit was a lady so and at the business forum meeting that he had in uh, Costa Rica uh, i think uh, judging by the speech by the Costa Rican minister she was very enthused mm -hmm. by the vice president's uh, initiatives uh, and uh, it so happened that it was on uh, international women's day and you know she was very forthcoming her speech was was remarkable in the sense that she went beyond the normal statistics that one would unveil at a business forum meeting or uh, commercial details and all that and i think this will take us forward a lot you know because latin american countries uh, are quite uh, high up on uh, women's empowerment i'm not talking right. of ordinary women but leaders you know michelle bachelet mm -hmm. uh, she was uh, president of chile twice the present uh, president of the un general assembly she is a woman and uh, let us not forget that vijayalakshmi pandit was there uh, uh, as the first woman president of the women's um, uh, of the un uh, general assembly in fact the current uh, president of the general assembly came here came to delhi and met uh, another lady sushma swaraj uh, before she took office and all that and uh, i think you know uh, visits visits of course are important but the uh, the the most important aspect is uh, you know uh, slicing out something on which we can build on and by doing this on international women's day i think uh, the vice president set the stage right for a new stage of expansion in our relations with latin america well that's true i mean vice president has often uh, emphasized on the upward mobility of women on all the sphere but sticking once again to the point of terror i mean during the high level talks with the paraguayan leadership paraguayan leadership has assured that they would back india's bid to un and other un forums for the permanent uh, bid for the seat i mean is it an important takeaway ambassador vishnu prakash well it is certainly an important takeaway and you know i'd like to give you an example of how important these visits are uh it reminds me of june 2016 when uh, prime minister modi uh, stopped over at mexico for just 5 hours 
uh, and he met with the president who drove him to an Indian restaurant uh, for food and agreed, dropped his objection to India's membership of the nuclear suppliers group okay. and accepted that. I mean, and Mexico, for example, is a member of the coffee club, which is opposed to it. So these all countries have their self-respect, have their ego, and they feel very happy. They feel wanted when Indian leaders visit them. Uh, and as I said, the stock of India is very high. India is going to be the third largest economy in the world. We have been an aspirant for the permanent membership of the UN Security Council. And also our soft power is something that we can be very proud of. So, uh, so these and many other factors, well, let's not also forget the Indian diaspora. Yeah. Even in geographically small countries like Paraguay or Costa Rica, Indian diaspora is there, highly educated, mm -hmm. playing a prominent, uh, active role which is very well respected. So given the totality of circumstances, uh, I'm happy that we are also now looking west uh, with growing interest and growing uh, uh, focus. And I would regard uh, Vice President's visit to these two countries as, a, as a, a significant message that we are as interested in Latin American countries. And today, geographical distances can be bridged. Hmm. So we can bridge it uh, with, uh, through soft power, bridge it through regular interactions. And I am seeing that is what is happening. And I welcome this. Uh, by soft power, would like to elaborate. What exactly do you mean by soft power? What, what are the spheres that the two countries, and I'm considering it was the first ever visit by any Indian vice president of Paraguay. So why soft you power? Like concrete example. The president of Paraguay uh, told Honorable Vice President that 25 years ago when he was a student, he had visited India and he had he developed a lot of respect for Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And every year till date, even as the president of this country, he reads a book on Mahatma Gandhi and he loves Indian cuisine. Now, one visit to India has this kind of an impact. That is the, the civilizational strength of India. And I have found in my long years as a diplomat, uh, yoga, cuisine, uh, India's music, culture, have a lasting impact. And uh, we, 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 in fact, for that matter, Bollywood. And this is right. the uh, 150th uh, birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. And um, many countries are observing it. Yoga is bringing, is becoming an international movement. Right. So that is the kind of strength that um, of India's culture, or India's soft power, because regardless of your ethnicity, religion, background, civilization, you can adapt facets of that. And it is not coercive, it is optional. So, th and we should, I think, utilize our soft power, uh, kind of expose the world to India's cultural heritage, uh, which we are doing. Right. So, you also think that uh, having, exploring the region of soft power, or the domain of soft power is important for India vis-a-vis -vis Latin America and Central American countries? Uh, I do think that it is uh, a very important um, factor in building up uh, a successful commercial and economic relationship because uh, all relationships start uh, from a personal front with person to person interactions and as uh, my friend Vishnu was mentioning a short visit of five hours by the Indian Prime Minister uh, to Mexico uh, mm -hmm. enabled us to make a huge uh, you know difference to the uh, NSG deliberations. So, uh, we should have as many friends as possible and uh, the soft power that we are trying to project is of course something which is uh, optional, it is something which is open to the other side to either accept or have a neutral attitude towards it or not accept it. Sure. There is no forcing of anything, uh, any opinion on anybody else. So that is why it is uh, extremely important. First, we build up people-to-people -people interactions, relationships, and then trade flows. 
Ambassador Das Gupta, just one more thing I would like to add. Like uh, uh, during his high level talk in, in Paraguay, he also emphasized in the sphere of agriculture, hydroelectric, and solar energy and health. Uh, how far we can go in these areas, considering these are the new avenues? Uh, Paraguay is basically uh, an agriculture dependent country. There aren't uh, too many industries there. It is also landlocked, mm -hmm. but it has certain resources. For instance, the world famous Iguazu Falls. Uh, that is uh, in the border of uh, Brazil, Paraguay, and perhaps a uh, uh, third country, uh, Argentina. Now, uh, it has a huge uh, hydroelectric uh, power um, uh, project. It also has untapped power potential. So, it could uh, provide us with uh, some kind of uh, uh, a synergistic relationship if we could provide them with uh, technology, with investments. Uh, so, and if uh, investments could follow mm -hmm. for uh, something which can exploit uh, low cost hydroelectric power. There are various industries which India has, which are suffering on account of comparatively high energy costs. So, those are the kind of industries which can be set up. Uh, we have uh, a very good uh, trade relationship with Paraguay. Of course, it is uh, not up to full potential because of uh, logistical problems because of the long distances, but uh, Paraguay uh, is the fifth largest producer of soya for instance and India is dependent a lot on imports of soya oil as part of its edible oil import package. So, um, uh, there are things on which we can cooperate. Mm. On solar energy, uh, India has uh, you know set up uh, an industry which is trying to uh, take giant strides in uh, uh, trying to meet the requirements uh, which will come up uh, over the next decade or so when India makes the transition from fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy. And that is something on which we can also cooperate, we can uh, uh, provide the technology. And I must mention in this context that India has extended a number of scholarships under the ITEC program of the Ministry of External Affairs to Paraguayan uh, students. Uh, whether they be in uh, um, science, technology, engineering, uh, other areas, management. So, that is the kind of thing which uh, will strengthen our uh, bilateral bonds, the people to people bonds and will facilitate areas of cooperation. Mr. Nair has uh, the trade, if, if we talk of trade and talk of both Paraguay and Costa Rica. In last few years, what has been scenario, has it gone up? Or you think there is a lot India and these two countries can achieve? Uh, trade has gone up in uh, in both cases, mm -hmm. but uh, there are constraints, and the biggest constraint is uh, connectivity. Uh, in the past, also we have attempted to uh, revive trade with uh, several of the uh, countries, but. Uh, in a way, putting trade is putting like putting the cart before the horse, you know. I mean, the opportunities are there, but how do you organize uh, connectivity? I mean, uh, even air, look at, look at the situation. One of his hosts, the vice president's host said that this is the first time an Indian aircraft, Indian aircraft of any kind, has landed on, on their soil, you know. I mean, um, uh, for us, aviation is a vastly expanding sector. Right. Uh, yet, you have a situation where uh, the hosts have to tell the vice president that this is the first time an Indian aircraft has landed. Same thing applies to uh, sea traffic, you know. Uh, see. Uh, Venezuela, for example, Venezuela is willing to give us cheap oil. Venezuela's condition being uh, what it is, unfortunately, they have to sell their oil. You know their sanctions and various other things. But uh, how do you how do you transport the oil? You know Venezuelans have some VLCCs, very large crude carriers, but they are constrained by the number of these carriers. You see, so even in a situation where India because of its growth and development needs energy mm -hmm. and here is a Latin American country which is willing to give us uh, cheap oil and yet we have the problem of uh, transporting that oil which is 
one of the reasons why we our reliance on gulf oil is 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 uh, so heavy uh, i am sure that uh, the vice president has been apprised of these problems mm -hmm. and uh, you know follow up is very important and i hope that once the vice president comes back uh, we will pay a lot of attention to the problem of connectivity which is extremely important because if connectivity is there i think trade will follow right I'm as Prakash, you agree like uh, there needs to be a lot to cash up in terms of uh, connectivity, if we say, because geographical distance is so vast. And I'm talking of both Costa Rica and Paraguay. Well, I was thinking about a very valid point made by my friend. I mean, connectivity is, an e is a factor, geography is a factor, but it's a bit of a chicken and egg. What comes first? Right. You cannot have connectivity unless there is traffic. You cannot have traffic unless there is connectivity. So, uh, and there are the commercial considerations also. So, I guess the way to look at it is, is the connectivity better than it was earlier? Yes, it is. And uh, with, I think, growing trade, growing tourism, growing people-to-people -people relations, connectivity will follow, is bound to improve. Especially in Costa Rica, the Vice President emphasized on the shared values between the two countries and a lot can be explored between the two nations. Right? Very much so. In, in fact, uh, in some regards, Costa Rica has done very well in terms of biodiversity, in terms of technology. It is one of the richest countries in the region. And, uh, you know, all these countries have their core strengths. And uh, we have ours. So certainly, one of the advantages of interaction is that we gain from each other. Uh, Jayanth was mentioning about uh, Paraguay, which uh, has a strong focus on renewable energy. In fact, uh, by some yardsticks, uh, they, have the they have the per capita largest use of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all these countries have their strengths and uh, there is a strong interest towards India and uh, it's high time that we build on that interest. Ambassador Shayant, uh, from the point of view of strength, what are the areas like to emphasize between India and Costa Rica? One of the things which we uh, set up was a center of excellence for, uh, for information technology. Mm -hmm. Now, Costa Rica had made rapid strides in uh, developing information technology. And in fact, uh, two of our companies, if I'm not wrong, uh, Wipro and TCS have set up bases there to cater to uh, South American countries and to the US. And uh, in comparison to setting up uh, something in the US, it has been quoted uh, by one of the uh, companies that the costs are 15 to 20 percent less. Lower. So what we can do is, you know, amongst many things, uh, is to explore uh, ways of accessing third country markets, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for both goods as well as for services. And uh, this could be a mutually beneficial uh, kind of a relationship. The second aspect is that uh, Costa Rica has... Uh, uh, you know, it is one of the largest exporters of bananas, pineapples, for instance, Europe, you go anywhere, uh, the pineapples are all from Costa Rica and a host of other uh, agricultural products in which they have harnessed technology for the benefit of farmers and uh, they have uh, made a success of exports. Uh, we are trying to move away from uh, cereal exports to horticultural exports. And this could be one of the things uh, in which we could cooperate, we could learn from Costa Rica, we could uh, invite them over to help us out and to spread uh, the technology that we need. Because, uh, of course, uh, we have a, a great deal of similarity in terms of the, the um, climate. So mm -hmm. there would be uh, uh, lessons to gain from Costa Rica. Uh, so these are uh, some of the areas in which uh, cooperation you know, comes readily to mind. And it could be, of course, beneficial for both sides. Mr. Nair, as, uh, uh, as the talks went on, there were also emphasis on, also emphasis on, uh, on not just terror, but also the menace which Latin American and Central American countries are facing, that is on the drug and narcotics. Sorry? On the drugs and narcotics. Narcotic. What is that sphere where India, India's relations, better relations with the Latin American and Central American countries can achieve? Well, um, the two countries that the Vice President uh, has been visiting, um, the drug problem is not so serious there, you know, unlike in, uh, say, Colombia or right. Mexico. 
but it's 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 a problem that affects the entire uh, region. Yeah, Latin uh, I mean, American some countries uh, it's a bigger problem. Some countries it's a smaller problem. But uh, the root of the problem does not lie in these countries. Sure. You see, the root of the problem is in the United States because the United States is the market for these drugs. You see, because uh, that's where uh, drugs are bought at a very high price and. Uh, uh, they go 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 from here, but uh, we have been uh, very active in the UNDOC, the United Nations uh, uh, Office on Drugs and Crime, and uh, we have considerable expertise on uh, what uh, we have been uh, doing there. Uh, we could perhaps share uh, our expertise with. Uh, with these countries, you know, but I think we should uh, we should also look at uh, what are our strengths, you know. Right. I mean, we have a certain amount, a certain degree of strengths uh, on uh, fighting drugs and crime, but uh, perhaps uh, we should not fritter away uh, our uh, engagement and interaction with these countries on this when there are other opportunities. For example, mango, you know. Okay. I mean, uh, the, um, these countries have mango, especially uh, Paraguay, and we, we, we are so rich in mango, you know. And actually, mango diplomacy is something that uh, uh, was thriving at one time, but it's been sort of underemphasized, you know. I mean, after all, we shouldn't forget that uh, uh, the uh, relations, our relations with the United States took a decisive turn when uh, the united states allowed indian mangoes right. to uh, to go there and you know we have some cooperation with the philippines on uh, mangoes so perhaps uh, cross fertilization of mangoes uh, right. you know um, uh, the i i i have tasted uh, uh, latin american mangoes uh, when i was living in the united states and i regret to say that uh, compared to our mangoes they have no taste you know so mango diplomacy, for example, is something that we could Can't emphasize on. Right, right. Thanks all three of you for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. So there we have to leave. So clearly a sea of opportunities between India and the Latin American and Central American countries to explore and not just on the areas of terror and narco or arms, but also on the soft power aspect of agriculture, hydroelectric, solar energy, and also in the sphere of education. Thank you for joining us. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV for more.